this is Kirsten Joy Weiss, and today I'm very happy to bring you a flintlock rifle. It was designed in the 17th century, and it's been used all around the world and in various cultures, including India, China, Africa, Europe, and even America. In America, particularly, they are specifically tied to America's freedom. In the Revolutionary War, this piece of technology right here helped the colonists defeat the invading British. The rifling on their flintlocks was superior to the British smoothbore, helped the colonists defend their freedom by giving them a few more yards against the British. And in that scenario, every advantage you can gain is crucial. And while repeating rifles like the Winchester 1873 might have helped win the West, this gun right here helped discover the West. It was carried on the backs of mountain men and frontiersmen as they traveled and explored America, hunted and survived. This type of gun is near and dear to my heart because it's a part of my history as an American, but also my history as a family. I have a few people in my family that work on historical flintlocks and also manufacture replicas. The funny thing is, I've never actually shot one. So I did my research, I studied up on this gun. We're gonna shoot a flintlock rifle for the first time together. So let's give it a shot. First things first, a flintlock is not like a regular rifle. You can't just stick a bullet in there, stick a cartridge in there, and have it fire. There's a lot of prep work. So we're gonna load the gun. I preloaded this uh, black powder loady thing. I'm not sure what the technical term is. Put it in the comments below if you know the technical term for this. Did my research, but couldn't find what this was called. <laughs> and I just wanna be real. So first, powder. Make sure they're all in there. This is 70 grains of powder, so really just like a target load. And then we're gonna take this patch and we're gonna grease it with a little bear grease. This particular patch is called ticking. Take our lead ball and put it in the patch, kind of right in the middle of our grease part, and the grease part's on the outside. Stick it in the top, right in the muzzle of the gun. Then we're gonna take this and push the ball down and not be too gentle, just push it down until it's snug in the muzzle. Take our knife and we're gonna be really careful, cut this patch down to about the top of where that lead bullet is. Take this tool again and we're gonna stuff the ball down into the barrel like that. And then we'll take our ramrod, take the wide end and stuff this all the way down into the barrel and it's hard to get started. <laughs> but once it gets started, <laughs> in theory, once it, imagine doing this in battle. Oh my God, <laughs> I'd be like, I'm dead. Just take me now, I surrender. <laughs> I'm not being a very good Revolutionary War soldier. I'd hide, I'd be a sniper. Then you have a lot of time to load. <laughs> Two hands, oh, there we go. <laughs> there, you make sure it's down there nice and good. Put the ramrod back in its little holder. It's prepped. The prison right here, the steel plate, is covering the powder charge. I don't have it charged for safety. And then this flint right here, the flint lock, I'm gonna cock this back and the flint's gonna hit the frizzin and that'll open up the frizzin and ignite the powder in the pan. Now this particular flint lock has a set trigger. I'm gonna set this trigger and then it will be primed and ready to go. And we're gonna see if we can hit a clay pigeon downrange. Now we are ready to shoot. In olden times, they probably didn't use eye protection, but we sure are, because this is black powder, and I want to protect my eyes. So, I'm gonna take this priming powder, and we're gonna prime this pan. Make sure that that powder gets all the way down in the hole that it needs to get into. Okay, close the frizzin, half cock it. Now we're gonna full cock it. Now it's ready. We're gonna set this trigger, and let's see if we can hit this clay pigeon. Trigger set. Here we go. <laughs> Can you see me? Can you see me? <laughs> Definitely hit that. That was awesome. Woo! Feel like I'm in a real a dive bar right now with all this smoke. <laughs> that is too fun. 
Now I'm going to point this in a safe direction because there's probably still some powder burning in there. That's just how these guns are. And we're going to clean this gun before shooting it again. Run a rod down with a lubricated patch to make sure no embers are burning. Back in the day when you were in a war zone or something like that, you might take your chances, but we're certainly not going to take our chances today. Stay tuned, it's not over, but before we continue, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you like what you see, hit that like button, and I'm glad that you're joining me here today. So let's go finish the job, Revolutionary War style. Thanks for joining me for the fun challenge and joy of shooting. Aim true and happy shooting. This is where the clay pigeon was. You can see that it hit right in the middle, right here. Not so bad for the first time. That is awesome. <laughs> might have helped one the less. What might have helped one of us? You have a flintlock, flintlock rifle. I am very happy to bring you a flint rock. Flint rock. They were flintlocks over here and print rocks in China. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I've been to Asia, I've lived there, I'm not racist. <laughs> this rifle, ooh, that's thunder. Not good to carry a steel rifle in a thunderstorm. Not a good idea. I think the colonists had to learn that the hard way too. Okay.